I'm a pretty proud Democrat, and I'm going to be voting for Kamala, period. Because she's not Donald Trump. <laughs> He's a convicted felon. 34 felonies. I mean, what? How many? Has he more? 60 more? 50 more? Like, dude's an absolute criminal. Rapes women. Steals from people. Yeah. Have you heard of uh, an actual case where he raped? Yeah. Yeah, E. Jean Carroll, bro. Heard of it? A woman who successfully sued former President Donald Trump for sexual abuse was up early today. E. Jean Carroll made the rounds on morning TV, saying she feels vindicated after years of Trump defaming her. A certain candidate is more concerned about the well-being of white people <laughs> and men specifically. Am I allowed to say without, like, getting beat up? Kamala. In this election, we each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? I just feel like she has the political experience. One, I love the way she carries herself. I feel like Trump just lacks that professionality in a sense, and he's kind of an embarrassment. When he's doing like foreign relations, just the way he presents himself on the media, it just embarrasses me. Every time I ask someone why they're gonna vote for Kamala, they either say abortion or they say they just like her because she's a woman. I think it's important to have a first woman president, especially since Women are minorities. I'm not gonna talk politics, but I am voting for the people that are for me. I don't know, do with that information what you will. <laughs> I mean, me being Nigerian American, that means like people that don't wanna deport my people out of this country, you know what I'm saying? By far the highest number of illegal visa overstays and by far a new record being set every single week. I think it's a little bit not of my business because Biden or Harris, whoever uh, won the president, doesn't ma I mean, matter to me because <laughs> a passerby. Where do you want to go to once you're done with school? I may come back to my country. Where's your country? I'm from China. What would you say to any immigrant who's going to vote for Trump? Why? I don't. I don't know. I don't know why they would do that, but. I really hope they look into his values. I think a lot of policies right now are based off of certain religious beliefs. And I think if we are sticking to the constitution as some would like to implement, then we should not cherry pick what we're doing and have full freedom of religion instead of basing policies off of certain religious beliefs. I want to remind you of the promise of scripture. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Today I am on campus at the University of Texas at Austin asking 100 college students if they'll be voting in the 2024 election, who they're voting for, and why. Keep in mind, the goal isn't to debate, but to hear the issues that matter most to tomorrow's leaders. Public vote did guarantee a spot for who the president is. I don't think that Kamala would be getting it because of how internalized both our racism and sexism is in the country. But also like adding on to that, speaking of which, we, even with popularity, like popular votes don't really matter uh, versus the electoral college. So even those that are voting independent, unless you have people in the electoral college that are representing that independent party, they're not actually deciding who the president is, right? Because electoral college takes, it, it has, they have more power than we do as like giving popular votes. So I guess, I don't know, in summary, <laughs> I don't love this election. And I also don't love the way that the US does voting. So I don't think that it should be by electoral college votes. <laughs> yeah, it's not really with the people then, is it? I think voting in every election is very important, or at least the ones that are pretty major. Uh, the presidential election is a pretty big one. And I think this year is a pretty serious time with a lot of unprecedented things that haven't happened before. The younger generation usually has more voters. It's still not everyone who knows a lot about either the candidates or how voting works. Voting does make a difference, even if it's just one vote you still go towards a popular vote, you still go towards some difference being made, and that is the easiest way that you can actually make a difference in this election cycle. Generally, I get the impression that we just don't really care about voting, like at least not nearly as much as like the older generation does. Being in college with DEI and everything going on, me personally, my orgs have been affected. My lifestyle on campus out of PWI has also been affected. So, you know, all of my mentors, they've been preaching, go out and vote, go out and vote. Your voice matters. What you do makes a change. Public vote did guarantee a spot for who the president is. I don't think that Kamala would be getting it because of how internalized both our racism and sexism is in the country. Personally, I will be voting for Kamala. Can I ask why? Um, she aligns with my values. A lot of her policies, she, she talks about policies, um, where in regards to other candidates, I feel is it's more of just targeting as opposed to going out there, making the change, speaking for the people. This is me playing the devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. 
I have not as of recently. There's no policy on Okay. How do you feel about that? I would have to check that out and get back to you. If you don't see anything there, does that change your mind? It can potentially, um, but it also depends on the other side, of course. So many people, I don't honestly think Beckham was going to win the, like, the election. Because of the people that would usually vote Democrat, most of them have been divided over the genocide in Palestine. So they're either voting independent or they're voting, or voting for Gamla. And there's also the aspect that she's a woman of color running for office. Let's be so serious. It's just still America. <laughs> like, I think it's important to have a first woman president, especially since... Women are minorities, and I don't really agree with the other nominee for the presidential election. I want to say that she's just overall for human rights. I feel like she's politically more experienced. She served under Biden, and I like the representation, and I like what she did under Biden. She specifically said that she was going to target the inflation rates that are going on. I don't know exactly what that's going to entail, but... I believe her, so that and I know that um, she was talking about abortion specifically and I'm not going to be against abortion for any woman who feels that that's her choice. I support a woman who feels like that that's what they want to do. I don't know, a lot of stuff with women's rights is going on, so I feel like it's important that I should vote in this. The ability for women to make their decisions on their own, not really so much be forced to make their decisions on their bodies. So many people get freaked out. They're like, oh no, people come across the border. Like, who cares, dude? Like, they're just people. Like, they want jobs. Like, it's not like they're taking our jobs, man. Like, if, if you really think that they're taking your job, like, you're feeding into conspiracy theories, man. It's, they're not taking your jobs, you know? Well, actually, the crime rate among illegal immigrants is actually lower than the crime rate among regular Americans. That's actually a statistic. I mean, you can say, oh, they're committing a crime by crossing the border. That's actually not, okay, sure. But anything else, like property crimes, violent crime, it's actually lower among illegal immigrants because they realize, well, if I commit a crime, they're going to deport me. So it's actually lower. I voted for Trump. I don't know. I really don't like what Kamala Harris stands for. And, like, I don't know. Even though I am usually vote blue, I'm voting red. Uh, this year because I'm I believe in democracy, but like this year I don't stand with a lot of what Kamala Harris says. I'm gonna vote for Trump probably why Trump because I think the most important things are the economy the border and I think Trump can run a country better I think the country was better off with Trump. We already know Trump was a good president We saw that maybe he didn't handle COVID as well as people liked him to but he was a pretty good president People the economy was better inflation's pretty high right now. I don't really believe in the whole political process Neither side really seems to represent the people. I mean they they both both are looking after their own interests. They're they're looking after union interests. They're looking after corporate interests. They're looking after bureaucratic interests. And and no one side is is thinking about the American people. Have you ever voted? Uh, yeah, I voted in like the last three elections. I mean, I knew that my vote didn't really make a difference. The, the states that I've been able to vote in um, leaned heavily blue or heavily red, and my vote is far away from being a difference maker. If I were to vote this election, it might be Donald Trump. I like some of the people that he surrounded himself with recently. RFK just had that endorsement. I think the VP guy seems like a decent fellow. Nothing going on on the Kamala team is exciting to me. My mother and father have, have always been voters. They've participated in every election. So that's kind of what's made me vote in the past. So it's been some disillusionment recently that's pushed me away from feeling like that's important for me to participate in. Yes, I do think my vote matters, especially because I come from a Hispanic background. Many of my um, parents and uncles are able to vote, but they don't vote at all because they don't believe in that, but I do. Right now, there's a lot of people coming in, and I'm, I'm very happy that they are and that they're receiving help because, I mean, in their home countries, they are um, they're experiencing, I mean, very bad situations. But then also there's people here that have um, had harder processes to get here, as in they've traveled really far, they walk, they've gotten into like trailers and stuff and suffer getting here. And they're not giving the same opportunities and they are not getting like the papers and they're not going through the process. Their process just takes way longer than the people right now that are coming in. So it's something that I'm So you're looking. saying it's unfair? Yes, I, I feel like it is kind of unfair. And you want some control. I, I, yes, I do believe in that. Because uh, the immigrants that are coming in aren't facing those difficulties that others face, 
they're causing some of them are causing a lot of destruction for example there's a lot of violent crimes in up north like in chicago and most of them are the immigrants that are causing that because they didn't suffer they think it's it's just easier for them what's it called cause all of that commotion get sent back and then get back in compared to people that are already here and suffered so they don't want to go back and just because of that a group of venezuelan migrants attacking and robbing a man on a Chicago train in February. Their surveillance images show one of the suspects choke the man while others pick his pockets. So our partners at News Nation, they're reporting it's part of a Venezuelan gang. They do report Homeland Security officials turned over the suspect, Gene Torres Roman, to the Denver County Sheriff's Office. Like we kind of grew up with the sense that our opinion doesn't matter, that every vote doesn't really count, especially in a state like Texas, where it's like, you know, solidly red, so we don't really have any faith that voting blue would do anything. I feel like the narrative around young people is that we don't vote as much because we don't care about politics. I feel like that's not true. The young people that I know are involved and interested in politics. It's more disillusionment. They don't think that people are willing to listen to them. They don't think that policymakers will make the changes that they want to see in government. And I think that's the biggest reason why young people don't vote as much. But I'm definitely not going to be one of those people. I'm definitely going to vote. I think it's more important that you educate yourself before you vote. You know, don't just believe everything you're told and follow along like a sheep. You know, you got to do some research yourself. Yes, I'm voting in this upcoming election. I will be voting Democrat. I feel like they align more with my morals than the other party does. I like the way they're taxing the more wealthy individuals and they're looking more out for the little man than the rest of the people. I think about the mail-in votes are a good idea, especially for those who can't accessibly get to the voting polls. I think we have a pretty good infrastructure about the skepticism about polling to where it will do its job and then. I'd say if I wanted like to like keep a bunch of my rights and stuff like that, I'd say Kamala Harris. What's one right that you think Trump's gonna take away from? I feel like he'd try to take away definitely LGBTQ rights. Kamala, as a vice president, I don't think she ever accomplished much. Every time I ask someone why they're going to vote for Kamala, they either say abortion or they say they just like her because she's a woman. I'm not going to talk politics, but I am voting for the people that are for me. I don't know. Do with that information what you will. I mean, me being Nigerian-American, that means like people that don't want to deport my people out of this country. You know what I'm saying? That's just a hint right there. You can't really complain about policy if you don't vote. Color should not be the sole reason that you vote. But I do think it's awesome if we do get to have a president who is like the first female president of color. But I don't, I'm not going to vote at the end of the day based off the color of the president. Age can have a correlation with mental capacity, but it's not always like a causation thing. So I don't think that just because you're old means that you're unqualified for presidency. But I think that if there's like other signs of you're just ineffective to lead, I think that's an issue. I know I for sure don't like a certain politician. And then, you, you know, his name? Donald Trump, come on. <laughs> nobody likes Donald Trump. I certainly don't like him. But you said nobody? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope people with uh, morals, like good people. Well, I don't know. I guess you can be good. I don't know. I, I question what type of person you are if you do like him. I think in America is one of the only few countries in the world actually that has free speech. I've been to many countries in Europe, Asia, uh, Africa that don't have, like countries that really don't have free speech and the citizens really don't have that many rights. There should be a limit to what you can say and what you can't say. I think once like you cross the limit, I think there should be like a little bit of consequences. But overall, I think America does have free speech though. So. Once you get to a certain point where like you're making like derogatory comments towards somebody that could be like racial or like slurs or anything like that. that that's where it gets to a point where it, you might have gone too far like climate change like global warming environmentalism the economy taxes I think that she's the best fit for America right now. I feel like her and Tim Walls, the new vice presidential candidate who she just elected as a vice president, I think that they they can make America like get back to how it was and get back to make a, it, America an even better country to live in. I don't think that Trump is a good leader. I think that he like brings a lot of dangers to the Amer America and stuff. So I hope she like reduces political polarization because there's a lot of stigma around talking about politics now and. I hope that there can be less of that going forward. I think a big thing I care about is like abortion. I think it should be like the woman's choice. A lot of my orgs were shut down because of DEI and everything. A lot of my professors had to like leave or stop teaching. So something I would like to like be put in place, you know, basically the whole DEI system in Texas to just like be removed. As you can see, the people we had initially running for president, Trump 
and Biden, they're well, you know, about to retire very soon. So I feel like, you know, the younger people she knows step up and be in office. We have so like millions of people in this country. So I definitely think that younger people should, you know, run for office. I wouldn't just because I feel like I don't, you know, I wouldn't run for president. Maybe something politics in the future, but we'll see. But not president. But not president. Why not? I feel like not everyone can wake up and say that they want to be president. Like, you have to have it in you. You have to know how to, you know, control people, run people, manage people, manage a country. And I feel like that's just a lot. Have you lost friends? From no. Telling them who you're voting for? No, I don't. No, I don't think so. And at the same time, you know, if, if they decide to go ahead and just have their views in front of them before me, well, then that's their decision to make. At least that shows me what uh, what kind of a person they are. At least I judge them better based off of whether they don't know whether they could at least face the fact that people have other opinions than them. And we just have to learn how to respect one another. It's perfectly fine. So far, um, I'm very conflicted, I'm leaning on one side, leaning on the other. I'm not too sure. More than likely, I might go blue. I don't know. Please stay tuned. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of family members who vote for Trump. Like some of my cousins that I'm really close with, not big Trump supporters, but they did vote for Trump in the last election. I don't let politics like get with my relationships. Budgeting just money towards certain groups, certain like education is a very huge example. Uh, her vice president, Tim Waltz, is a very large in that I've seen his work of him as governor. And yeah, that's a very important one for me is education. From immigrant parents, I think it's important to voice out my opinion, especially because my parents can't do that. So I think I have to sort of voice out their own opinion as well, since they can't vote. I know there's been some stuff with birth control as well. Um, and I think that should be something that is decided on like one's own. I feel like it's something that shouldn't have to be like regulated by like the government, I think it's something very personal, so it should be something that can be decided like personally. Do you ever sometimes see yourself leaning conservative? I don't think so. I'm from Australia. I can't obviously vote in the American elections here, but I will be voting back home. It's it's a requirement, so. Do you think every country should make more than one party? Look, I I support the idea because I think it is always better to encourage people to uh, speak and voice their own opinions in, in civil matters like that. So I think it's always a, a positive influence for sure. What's the penalty if you don't vote back home? There's fines. So even while being here, I've got to mail in my votes and everything. So it's a whole process, yeah. How much are the fines? Look, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't gotten one yet and hopefully I won't. I know they're it's not something you can just ignore, really. From an outside perspective, I mean, it's even similar to back home. I, I'm i not a big fan of the two-party system. I believe that it just kind of divides people, and I really think that that isn't something that we should be aiming for, especially in recent years. It has gotten a lot worse, and, you know, I definitely think that should be something that we should be striving in all aspects of the world, both uh, back home and here, to really rectify. As we head towards the 2024 US election, tensions are high and the outcome could go in any direction. The perspectives we've heard here today, whether you agree with them or not, are what people use to decide who they think is best for the country. Personally, no party or candidate is perfect, but it's about choosing the one who truly has well-beings of Americans at heart, and that choice is subjective. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, but I encourage you, don't just follow the crowd or take things at face value. Do your own research and dig a little deeper. I'll see y'all in the next video.